Father, your word is life. You said, Lord, that as bread <clears throat> is to our bodies, uh, that brings life to our mortal members, oh God, you said your word was life to our spirits. May we drink of you today. May we eat of you. May you manifest yourself. Father, <clears throat> and let everyone know that you are here. That you are the God we've been waiting and looking for. There is no other. Everything we hope and can believe for is wrapped up in who you are. No one has ever even attempted to say that they've done the things that you have done. Father, you are one of a kind. There is no one like you. You're our Lord and you're our Savior. Help us today. Let the Holy Spirit that resides in us guide us today. We thank you. Your word is anointed and alive. Now anoint our spirits to receive and to preach and to see with you, Lord. We thank you. We ask all of these things in the mighty and matchless name of your Son, our Lord and Savior. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. And in his name, amen yeah. and amen. You may be seated. Turn with me to uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read a lot of scripture today because I believe that it's the word that does the work. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things against is, is no trouble for, to me, for it is a safeguard for you. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord your God to write again, amen, is no trouble to me and is a safeguard for you. If you have your Bible, I want you to just underline rejoice and safeguard. This is Paul speaking now. He's a prisoner. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of the false circumcision. For we are the true circumcision who worship God in the spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus. And put no confidence in the flesh. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. And then he begins to give you his background. He begins to give you his resume. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, Benjamin was the strongest tribe, amen, out of the 12. Or well, at least uh, there are scholars that believe that. Amen. And he, and he starts to quote Amen. He says, circumcised by the eighth day, the nation of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He's saying, in other words, I'm the real deal. He said, you don't get no more being a Hebrew than me. And his life, his life approves this. As to the law, a Pharisee. In other words, he's saying, I'm a lawyer of the law. In other words, I'm an expert on the law of Moses. I know it inside and outside. And not only do I know it, I live it. Oh, I, oh, I try to live it. He said, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church. In other words, he's saying, when I, when I was like this, I persecuted the church. Amen. Uh, and, uh, and he says, unto righteousness, which is in the law, found blameless. 
This is, this is the Apostle Paul. But here, now listen to what he says here. Everybody's worried about is this the last day and what's going to happen and how we're going to get through it. And I, this sermon is about how we're going to get through it. Amen. We, we, I can say this to you. It's all right to read through the book of Revelation, but that's not the way to get through. There are a lot of scholarly people, they like to read through Revelation, they like to go through it and they like to do, but that's not the answer, amen. That only tells you what's going to happen, but it doesn't tell you how to prepare yourself to go through what's going to happen. We're going to talk about that today, but you're going to have to smile. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to have to change your face. Because no matter what it is, God is greater. He said, but whatsoever things were gained to me, those things I've counted as loss for the sake of Christ. He said, everything I said, he said, now that when I met Jesus, all of those things became nothing to me. He said, I forgot about being a Pharisee, amen. I forgot about being a lawyer. I forgot about being zealous, amen. He said, and then I ran in to Jesus Christ himself. And I, 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 I stopped persecuting the church and became the chief advocate of the church. He says, he says, I count all things to be lost in the view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus. All things and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ. And in the Hebrew, it's not rubbish, it's dung. If you don't know what waste is, ask your, dung is, ask your neighbor. He says, and I count them rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death in order, being conformed to his death in order that I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. That's the recipe. For how to go, for if the rapture don't come when you think it's going to come. That's the recipe right there. How, I'm prepared that no matter what happens, amen, if I die, he'll resurrect me again. Amen. Not that I've already obtained it or have become perfect or mature, but I press. Touch your neighbor, say, you got to press. Not get the TV remote, press. Don't press the TV remote, press into Christ. Press into this word. Press into serving God with more of your time. Press into reading his Bible more than you've been reading. Press into say, Lord, I love you and I need you. Now open up my mind, my spirit, and my soul that I might hear your voice. That I might know what you're saying to me. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect or mature, have this attitude. That's the attitude you should have. I'm pressing after God. I'm pressuring God. I'm after him. Night and day, Jesus is on my mind. My prayers are on my lips. My worship is extending unto him. 
I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, have this attitude. And if anything in you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. Oh, hallelujah. I heard about a man who was playing a cello. He had just his finger on one spot and never moved his finger from it. Somebody said, why don't you move your hand up and down like the other musicians? He said, they're looking for it, but I found it. When you find Christ Jesus, you shouldn't be looking, amen, for other things if you found him. I don't care if it's post-trib, mid-trib, no-trib. That don't matter. If I find him, because everything's going to happen, it's going to happen through and by him. So the closer I get to him, the safer I am. It's not doctrine, it's Jesus. It's not what this one said and what that one said. No, it's what Jesus has said. What did Jesus say? He said, they're looking for it, but I found it. Have you found him? Come on. Have you found, no, have you really found him? I'm not talking about the TV God. I'm not talking about somebody else's view of God. I'm saying, have you found Christ Jesus for yourself? We go out and try to rebuke the devil. I'm going to rebuke the devil. I rebuke you, devil, in what Pastor David said. The devil say, Pastor David, I know, but who are you? You got to rebuke him, amen, for yourself. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The apostle Paul had only one note and one goal and one standard. Christ was his goal and the standard of his life. What is your goal? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, what is your goal? What is your standard? In other words, the standard is your highest goal. When you're surfing through the TV, what's going to get your attention every single time? What are you going to say, oh, I was going to watch this, but now that I see this, I'm going to watch that. The goal is the objective towards which an endeavor is directed. What, why did you get saved? Why did why, 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 you get saved? You know, why did why, you get saved? To make God your puppet? Well, I mean, he ain't going to be your puppet. He's going to be God. And he don't want you to be his puppet. He wants you to be his daughter. He wants you to start being his son. Not saying, oh, that's his son and that. No, you. I'm his son. I am his blood-bought daughter. Oh, God. If you can't say it now, when, you, when can you say it? I'm, I'm going I'm to give you one more chance. I am his blood-bought daughter. Oh, hallelujah. That's who I am. They call me this on the job, but that's what I do. But this is who I am. I am a child of the living God. And the enemy has no power over my life. Because he has been defeated and he's under my feet.
And I don't care what Susie or the next one couldn't get, amen. That has nothing to do with me and my relationship with God. Let's define a goal. Webster say the goal is the objective towards which an endeavor is directed. How many know when God created you, he had a goal in mind? That's why you have the mix, the gift mix that you have. That's why you, you think the way you think. That's why you can do what you do. And you get upset because other people, but other people ain't you. They got their own gift, amen, assessment so they can accomplish what God created for them to do. And together we make the church. So the church can do anything. I'm going to talk over here. The church can do all things. Because everything that it needs is already in it. Mm -hmm. touch your neighbor say neighbor we're going to need finish line faith amen we're going to have to go all the way to the finish line see there was a great theater amphitheater in uh, where Paul was in Philippi, and it sat 100,000 people. And he could see the races. He could see them striving with all of their strength for the goals that were set before them. And he was striving with all of his strength to reach Jesus. What are you striving for? What are you running your race for? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finish line faith. To finish the race secure in Christ Jesus. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, we need finish line faith. How many have been saved for a while? How many know you've been running in the race? But how many know you got to see now the end of the race? And I'm striving now. Because all of what I did before, Elder Rosa, don't count. I've got to make the finish line sanctified. Amen. I'm going to be saying, I'm going to make this thing. I didn't run all of that way to quit now. I got finish line faith, and I'm running for this finish line. I don't care what this one does. I don't care what you do. I don't care what they say. I'm running towards Jesus. And if he comes down on Monday, I'll beat him. If he comes down on Tuesday, I'll see him. If he comes down on a Saturday, I'll be there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Finish line. Run for the finish line. He says, he goes down to verse 21. For to me... To live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I am to live on in this flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which to choose. But I'm hard pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ. For all that is very much better. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. He says, I'm living to edify you. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, he says to them, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things. And I do it. And if you read it, Amen. It says, I do it. It's in verse 1. To safeguard your faith. I said, wow. What is you saying there, Lord? The word there is charo. It means to be careful, to be cheerful, to be calmly happy. To be happy on the inside of yourself, with yourself, and with the God that you serve. Amen. 
And that, that's what I sensed last night when I came in. You know, when I came into the gathering, it was snowy. It was a whole lot of stuff. But there was a joy. There, there was a freedom. There was something even more. You know what it was? There was rejoicing. Stay with me right here. And he uses the word rejoice. And he, this is what he said. Rejoice for in your rejoicing, amen, it's a safety for your faith. Wow. He says that we, last night, we rejoice. We rejoice in the Lord through worship. We worshiped with Brother Michael Corbin. Wasn't he good? We just worship. We worship through friendship. We sat at a table maybe we never sat before, saw a person we never seen before. We broke bread together. Come on, somebody. Through laughter and genuine joy of each other's company. We were the church last night. Minister Nikki and Mr. Larry did a tremendous, and for everyone that came, we thank you. you we did a tremendous, we just came and we became who we were. The church, the children of God. Nobody was dressed up too much, but we were dressed just right. And we had fellowship. We danced together and we worshiped together. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you see it? It's right there in the text. The apostle said, when you come together, rejoice. He, said, he says, I do it every time I make sure that we rejoice. Why? Because it's a safeguard for your faith. Some of you come and, 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 and it's all down. And it can be all down. You're serving the, the God of the universe. It can be down. And he wants you to rejoice. Step out in the aisle once in a while. Worship the God extravagantly. Oh no, I can't raise my hand more than this because somebody's going to I don't kill a ham sandwich what you think. I, I, I'm not going to dance around because they'll say, look at him. A little girl got up last night. She's seven years old. She's been dancing in the church since she's two years old. She was in El Pac dancing, two years old. Now she's seven. You should have saw her worship God. Seven years old. You 37. You 47. And you can't, you don't worship. Good luck, amen, on that plan you have of getting into heaven because everybody in heaven are worshiping God 24. Oh, you're going to start too late. Too late. In here, stuck to your seat like the seat is your safety rack. No, Jesus is the safety one. Jesus is the safe rock. Go to G. If I'm with Jesus, I'm safe. Your chair not going to help you. Oh, I'm worried about their opinions. What? You lost your mind. Touch your neighbor. Say, you better clap or they're going to think he's talking to you. A little girl, I couldn't take my eyes off of her. Seven, just worshiping God. You saw it, Rose. You saw it, Minister Freddie. You saw it. She worshiped, man, till the worshipers. Our sister had to stop and catch her. She was in abandonment. They had to keep, grab her so she wouldn't fall down. She wasn't playing. She was serious. Seven years old worshiping. What you gonna say? What you gonna say? 
I got to guard this here wall over here. This is why I come out to the wall and I guard the wall. But I don't go near the, 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 I don't go to the front. I don't ever kneel down. I don't ever worship. I don't ever give God the glory. But when you was in the world, they call you twinkly toes. Shaking your tail feather. You didn't care who saw you. You didn't care what they said. You just shaking your tail feathers. That's why you don't have none now. Paul says, every time you come together, rejoice. Why? Because rejoicing in the Lord safeguards our faith. When we rejoice in the Lord, we build a hedge around our faith. When we come together and rejoice like we're doing today, we strengthen each other's faith. We, so so we, we appeal to you to move so that someone's faith will be strengthened. But if you sit, then they sit. And then the next one sit. Sit as long as you want. Amen. When that trumpet blows, I hope you can get up. Say, <laughs> so Bishop, that's rough. That's personal. Absolutely. Because I care about you like that. I care about you like that. What? You can't lift your arms to God? You, you can't lift your hands to God? You can't worship him and give him the glory. Wow. So we strengthen each other's faith. We safeguard our collective faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We safeguard our faith when we worship together. That's why I come up and it's, I don't feel like it all the time. I be worship him. I don't care. Amen. Because that's one of the things he said. Worship me. That's one of the things he said. Worship me. When you come into my presence, worship me. Don't start talking about your problems. Well, you don't answer my prayer. No, because you don't follow protocol. He tells you when you come in, worship me. Thank me. He says in here, he says, he says, I press. He says, not that I've already obtained it. He says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death in order that I might obtain to the resurrection of the dead. He's saying, he's saying no matter what it takes, I'm going to give God everything that I got. Amen. He said, I'm pressing towards the call. He didn't write this, amen, in a, in, in a mansion in Beverly Hills. He wrote this in a jail cell in Philippi. While, while he was in prison. He said, I'm a prisoner. He said, but God is using me to witness because every God that sits down with me walks away saved. Praise God. It's in uh, Philippians 3.12. You can see it right there. He says, But I press on so I may lay hold of what for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. Touch your neighbor. Tell him yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have it yet. But this one thing that I do. Oh, I'm worried, Bishop. If Jesus comes and blows the trumpet and I may not go. He tells you right here. This one thing, Paul says, that I do. Hallelujah. Forgetting what lies behind. And reaching, stretching forward to what lies ahead. 
Some of you are stuck in the past. The past is your resume. The past is your everything. The past guides you. The past stops you. I never did that before. Uh, you know, but you know, if you're going to go on with God, it's like what uh, Elder Nisi preached. She came up and did a story preaching. Amen. She, she had a lot of courage because she was preaching without her notes. She was preaching just doing the story. And God was right there with her. Forgetting the things that were behind. I'm not preaching like I preached 25 years ago, Elder Rosa. I'm preaching like I got to preach now. You say, oh, you, you don't take all this. It takes all of this to get you out of your seat. Church is asleep. We should, when they said take the Bible out of school, we should have lost our minds and said, over my dead body. Over my body, you taking that out. Now look at what we got. But where were we when it counted? We're fighting a battle right now to rebuild this building and in the other building. But we're fighting about, are you in the battle? Or are you in the complainers? I don't know what's taking them so long. I'm not giving my money because I don't see, oh, oh, so you're an expert now. You know what you don't know. No, I'm not going down that, that rabbit hole. Not that I've already obtained. It's the word telomai. The same thing that Jesus said. He said it's finished. My past is finished. I'm well on my way reaching out for Christ. How do I make it, Bishop? Let me tell you again. I'm well on my way reaching out for Jesus. He says, I'm reaching out for the Jesus that reached out for me. If it's not personal, it's not real. When I need something, I can say, God, it's me. Not, not Rosalie, God, it's me. The one that you rescued. The one that you saved by your blood. It's me, Lord. If you say, you don't tell him, because you know not that he needs to be reminded, you need to be reminded. Lord, it's me. It's Freddie, Lord. You remember, oh God, when I had the meat market, oh God, and you told me to give away the meat, and I gave it away, God. It's me. Now I'm coming because I got a need. Hallelujah. Get real with God. What's wrong? Nothing. What's the matter? Nothing. What can we do? Nothing. Why is your face hanging down on the floor? Nothing. No reason. It's just hanging down like that. Why are you depressed? Oh, I'm just depressed. I'm neurotic. And I'm, come on. No. Go to God honestly and say, God, I did this. I expected this to happen. It didn't happen. But you know what, God? Help me to go through that. Help me to get over that. So I can get on with the business that me and you have together. Because I'm already convinced that you don't want to go without me. That's why you died for me. Because I don't want to go without you. That's right. He says, friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal. With, I got my eye on the goal. Where is that? where God is beckoning us onward. Notice that he says it's not just me, but it's us. 
Where are we going? To Jesus. He says, I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. You know, Lady Dorothy's sick. This year, 2018, God willing, we have 49 years of marriage. A lot of stuff went on in that marriage until God got it right. But one of the things, so when you think that God can't fix your marriage, then you're in the wrong place. Because then your, first, your faith now is earthbound. But you got to lose your faith that your faith can be heaven bound. I can't do anything but God. But God. That's how you became known as God. Because you can do the things that no one else can do. The thing, you said, Bishop, what would you think was one of the most important things you did in the marriage to make the marriage work. I got my dictionary out. I took my pen, amen, and I put ink and, 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 and uh, raced out the word uh, 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 for, you know, break, take the word and, and erase the word that said, uh, uh, impossible. Amen. All things are possible. All things are possible. See? No, no. See, see how you're looking? You're looking. Yeah, but, but you don't know. No. All things are possible. All things. Because God said that all things are possible to them that believe. And the word I, I, I wrote out after that was divorce. I just, I said divorce doesn't exist in my world. And so no matter what happens, Let's work it out. Let's work it out. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. you're going to have to win from within. from within. Yeah, 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 Rose. Rose, you're going to have to win from within. We don't always know what God is doing but we know the nature of the God that is doing it. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor. We don't have all the answers. But we do have a promise. Oh, hallelujah. I want to read you some old school stuff that they used to say. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Amen. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, no other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to veil his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Hallelujah to the King. His oath, his covenant, and blood support me. In the whelming flood, when all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and my stay. Jesus is the answer. Getting closer to him, building a relationship with him, when he gets freely talking back to you. Amen. That's what we're looking for. That's, what, that's what's going to get us through everything. Come on, somebody. When the last trumpet's voice shall sound, O oh, may that I then be found, clothed in righteousness alone, faultless to stand before his throne. That's the goal. Jesus, I'm going to be 
where you are. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Jesus said, let your heart not be troubled. The same way that you trusted the Father, trust me. Trust and believe. How many know that trust and belief go together? You can't have one without the other. They all go together. Don't limit God to a house. Touch your neighbor. Say, he's talking to you now. Don't limit God to a house, to a car. Amen. Don't limit God to where your family's at. Don't limit God to what your resources can say. Because then that makes your faith earthbound. Amen. Rise up on high. And let your faith be where God is. Don't let money, don't let because you don't have resources, don't let money dictate what you can do and what you can't do. Oh, hallelujah. Touch your neighbor, tell them, especially this. What is it, Bishop? Your present circumstances. Don't let your present circumstances. No, no, no. God, this is going to change. Only what you tolerate can stay. But if you say it's got to change, God said, then let's change it. But if you tolerate it, then let it stay. Because you're the ruler on this planet. Oh, hallelujah. God is talking to somebody. Come on. If we've been through the fire and we've been through the flood and we've been through the pain, and they're going to give up now? No. Love gospel? Come on. Witness. Oh, I can't. No, witness. You can't do it, but God can. But you don't want to. Because you're sleeping. And sleeping people are going to have a hard time getting into heaven going to have a hard time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, now when I turn the TV on, I see a nice movie. I say, oh, I want to see that. I go into, they curse. Change it. Boom. What, what channel was that? I ain't turning back to that channel. Amen. I'm starting to eliminate them now. Elder Rosa, I'm starting to cut them off now. Saw so a children's show. They were talking crazy on there. Don't watch that no more. Amen. I'm starting to narrow it down. Do you see what I'm saying? Now? I'm starting. Everybody go on the broad road, but God said take the narrow road. Start cutting out stuff. Oh, I'm cu I cut, kick you to the curb. Amen. Let you go. Amen. Why? Because I mean business with God. Because I believe it is the last day. When I look at the White House, I know it is the last day. My circumstance, my present circumstance does not dictate my relationship with the Lord God, my Savior. Hallelujah. Things may not be going the way I want them to, Pastor Lil, but I'm still a blood-washed child of a living God. That didn't change who I am because I got in trouble over here and this didn't work out over here, but that don't mean that I'm not his child. I'm weary, but he promises to give me strength for the journey. Therefore, I press. No, 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 no. I'm turning you off. How do I press? Turn that off. I turn you off. Amen. Put on some Christian music. I press. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Job getting crazy. I go in the bathroom. I get in the stall, and I pray. I, I call him by name. Amen. I, I talk to him every day. I started talking in tongues again because I forgot that I had a weapon. Oh, 
that I haven't been used. God says, what happened to your ability to talk in the language that I gave you? Because when I talk in tongues, that activates the Holy Ghost that's living in me. And if you're going to win, you got to win from within. You're not going to win from the outside. You're going to win from the inside. God is living in me. I refuse to give up. I refuse to die. I'm going to live. And I'm going to accomplish what God saved me for. Therefore, I press. It used to be. Pastor Dorothy, Pastor Lil, Pastor David, it used to be that traditional Pentecostals, amen, it was about faith. Faith to make it through heaven's pearly gates. Mm -hmm. Amen. But now that we got neo-Pentecostals, that's new, a new kind of Pentecostal. Amen. Before it was about enough faith to get us to heaven, but the Neo-Pentecostals uh, said, faith must help us live better while we're here. Ain't got no problem with that. That's all right. But, but, but the more you concentrate on being here and living here, the more you might stay here. So go ahead with your bad self. Oh, oh, I got the car now and I got the, but, but, but Jesus just cracked the eastern sky. Come up, behold. No, God, I can't come up now. I got a Mercedes. Come up y yonder. No, God, I can't, I can't take time now. Amen. You, you see, God, I, I got this new house. Listen, when the trumpet sounds, I don't care what I'm doing. Whatever I got in the bank, you can have it. Because where I'm going, I don't need it. What it is nowadays is people saying, if you had my faith, you would have what I have. What you determines, what you have determines how close you are to God now. Mm -hmm. The car you drive, the place you live. If you don't have the right car, it shows that you're not close enough to God. But it's not the car, it's the faith that got the car. It ain't the car. Amen? These things show how, how close uh, uh, to God. When we think like this, we've connected our faith to the earthly realm. In other words, all I think about is faith for the earthly realm. You know what I mean? But if I'm going to think about first faith for the earthly realm, I'm going to think about getting all of my children and my grandchildren and my nieces and my nephews saved. Because, you see, when God can do through me for others, that means my faith is alive and well. But I cannot allow my faith to be limited to the earth. That's when we said, oh man, I tried that before, it didn't work, it can't work. God says all things are possible to him, to her who believes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's faith in God that allows us to know that our faith is not limited to the earth. In other words, if your faith is in God, your faith has to rise up to where God is. Are, are you with me? My faith is in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Purpose-driven people 
are driven by a mission. That's why you're here today. You should be here because something's driving you for a mission. You're here on purpose. You didn't just drive all the way down for past Middletown minister and turn in here and say, uh, let's just try 183rd Street. No, you came with a mission and with a purpose. I'm here today, Lord, that you're going to restore my health. I'm coming to church today, Lord, and I'm going to worship you. And I'm believing that in the middle of the worship, I'm going to shoot my hands up like this. And when I bring my hands down, I'm going to feel different. I'm, I'm going to be different. Oh, you're taking too much on yourself. Well, the woman with the issue of blood, she did it. She did it. The blind man, he shouldn't have called out to Jesus, but he said, oh, Jesus, thou son of David. They said, shut up. He said, oh, Jesus, thou son of David. They said, be quiet. He said, you ain't blind. Oh, Jesus, the son of David. He said, what, 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 what? Jesus came and said, how can I help? He said, I want to see. He knew why he was on the road. Take me to where Jesus is and put me on his path. And let me know when he's coming by. I'll take care of the rest. No, you, our faith has to rise up to where Jesus is. We had the faith to rebuild the temple. But now we want to rest in the fact that it's rebuilt. Touch your Lord and say, that's not why we rebuilt it. Uh, we rebuilt it that we can touch hurting and dying people in this community and because you said you know it's the end of time what you what we gonna say to Jesus I, I didn't want to give to that because you know hallelujah we need to be purpose-driven people with a mission how many know that we have a mission an assignment Luke 4 18 for the Lord has called me he has anointed me to preach this gospel. Oh, hallelujah. How many know that you can take my life, but you can't stop me from serving God? That, that, that should be where we are. You can take my life, but you can't stop me from worshiping, from serving, from praying. They told the apostles, you know, we're going to let you go, but don't use that name again anymore. They said, well, listen, we, we're glad you're going to let us go, but we got to do what we got to do. And we're going to use the name we're telling you now. And if you're going to do something about it, then go ahead and do it because we're not going to stop using the name because the name is the power. The name is the power. The name in your mouth is the power. I, God, I want to be healed. I want it as bad as the woman with the issue of blood. I want it as bad as the blind man. I want to be healed. Oh, thou son of David. You can take my life, but you cannot stop me from serving God. He's not only the God of the rich, he's the God of the poor. I don't think you understand. He's here right here in this church, right here in the boogie down, as much as he is in downtown. He's right here in the hood. Yeah, yeah. He grew up in the hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nazareth was in the hood. Oh, you don't want to talk to me now. He grew up with poor people, and so did we. But he, been, he let them rub off on him, and he rubbed off on them. Oh, hallelujah. He's right here in this hood. I believe he'll walk with you. I believe he'll talk with you. I believe he'll listen to you. Oh, God. Jesus said, you believe in God, the Father, believe in me. Everyone has a concept about God. 
He says, but you believed in the Father for thousands of years. Here I am, the Son, and you can't believe in me. He said, it's something wrong with that. They said, what's wrong, Lord? He said, you never saw the Father, but me you can see. You weren't here when he did the miracles, but the miracles I do, you can see. He said, if you believe in God the Father, believe in me. The same faith that you have in the Father, have in me. He said, but some things will be out of your control. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you don't see me, trust me. When things don't go the way you want it to go, amen, believe in me. Worship me. Come to me. Tell me, Lord, it's not working out. But I, God, I'm upset about how it's not working out. But I still believe that you can work it out. When you don't see me, trust me. When you do this, you will do the things that I have done. The word of God is sure. We have believed what he has done. We believe what he's doing, and we believe what he will do. It's not, touch your neighbor, tell him, neighbor, this is the last time I'm going to touch you now. <laughs> tell him it's the last time. So you're going to miss my touch. You're going to miss it. You're going you're gonna to miss it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, neighbor, listen to me. Say, neighbor, it's not about the stuff. See, this is whatever we have, I leave it behind. Because it's not about the stuff. I'm not in love with the stuff. I'm in love with the master. It's about our relationship. When you go to him, say, Lord, I'm here. I'm upset. But you know why? Because it's about our relationship. This is not working, and I don't understand why. You don't have to tell me, but Lord, I thought it was going to be different. That's what Job said. I wish I had, I wish I could talk to him. It's not working out, and I don't know why. Sometimes God will step back and let it be a test. Because when he lets it be a test, amen, the fakers quit. But those that believe, you, you know, oh God, you didn't give me the stuff and now I'm upset. Amen. Now, uh, 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 it didn't work out the way, now I'm upset. Oh, so let me get this now. You're in this for the stuff. No, Lord, I'm in it for you. Well, if you're in it for me and you didn't get the stuff, me and you should still be all right. We should still be all right because I'm going to pass the test. I I'm going to pass the test because I've come too far now. I've come too, I cannot turn back. So Lord, if this is a test, greater than I thought I could handle. I come to my knees weeping and say, Lord, it's more than I can handle. I can't handle it. You got to help me. You got to do it. I can't do it, Lord, but it needs to be done. I'm crying out my heart at the feet of your throne because I know you're faithful. I know you're true. I know you're a lover. I know you died to save me. I know you'll never quit. Oh, God, I'm not going to quit either. But, Lord, my humanity has gone as far as it can go. But if you have Help me. If you lift me. Because God wants to see and show the devil. See, it was never about the stuff for my servant. See, she's not about the stuff. She's about me.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm really done right there. Hallelujah to the King. I'll say it again. Why, why did God give you the Holy Spirit? Come bring the communion. Why did he give us the Holy Spirit? Why, why would he do that? Because with the Holy Spirit, we can win from within. Everything on the outside can go wrong. But you got, amen, a, a fountain of living water. Oh, but you got to say, Lord, let the fountain run. Spring up, oh well. Oh, hallelujah. Spring up, oh well. I'm down and out in my physical being, but there's still something in me. I can't do it in my flesh. My body's weak, but there's something in me that's greater than everything that's outside of me. God is living in me. I can do all things. And when I take this communion today, the devil is going to get out of my way. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you for staying tuned in today. Did you enjoy today's message? I pray that you did. And I also pray that your relationship with God is growing by leaps and bounds day by day. Now there's so much more to come, so I want you to be sure to like, follow, and share us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Just type in Love Gospel Assembly and I'm sure you will be blessed by what you hear and see. And in the meantime, be sure to ring that subscribe bell. You won't want to miss all that's coming up. So have a blessed day.